Welcome to the Center of Online Education. Today we are going to discuss about graphs and diagram. It is one of the important topic in research methodology. As you all know that data processing is an intermediate stage of the work between data collection and data interpretation. The data gathered in the form of questionnaire, interview, schedules, field notes, data sheets is mostly in the form of a larger volume of research variables. You know there is an intermediate stage of data processing and data interpretation means whenever a researcher is going to collect a data, he has going to process the data and while processing a data, after processing a data, he is going to interpret the data. For data interpretation, he required graphs and diagrams. So, graphs and diagrams are very important and essential for any researcher to present his work in a more simpler form. Now, there are four steps in processing of the data. The first step is editing, the second is coding, third is classification and fourth is tabulation. So, after collection of a data by the different medium that is questionnaire, schedule, data processing is being considered over here. First step is editing. So, editing of a data is a process of examining and collecting the raw data to detect errors and omissions and to correct these when the possible. As a matter of fact, editing involves as a careful scrutiny of a completed questionnaires and schedules. Means data editing is very important as whenever a researcher is going to collect a data, there are certain biasness which the respondent used to adopt and by the help of data editing, we are going to edit our data and we take the data which is useful for our research work. Editing is done to assure that the data are accurate, consistent with other facts gathered uniformly, interned as a completed as possible and have to be well arranged to facilitate coding and tabulation. So, your coding and tabulation activity highly based on the editing of our data because the data you have collected, whatever data you have collected by the medium of questionnaire or the means of schedule, it is a raw data and this raw data needs editing means it should be classified. So, for classification or tabulation of data, editing is very important. Here we used to consider whatever data is for our use, we used to consider that data only. Whatever data is not of use, we used to eliminate that data from our research work. Then coding. Coding refers to the process of assigning numerals or other symbols to the answer so that responses can be put into a limited number of categories or classes. Such classes should be appropriate to the research problem under consideration. Whenever we are going to conduct a research, we have got a research problem. As in the previous lecture, I have told you what is a research problem. So, from this research problem, you are going to extract a hypothesis and to test that hypothesis, you are going to have a data interpretation, data analysis. So, here in coding, you are going to code the system, you are going to get the raw data and after editing of the data, you are going to code that data into various numeral forms. This numeral forms of data is very useful for a researcher because here he is going to categorize the data into different numeral forms. Then classification, a larger volume of raw data which must be reduced into homogeneous group if we are to get a meaningful relationship. This fact necessitates classification of the data which happens to be the process of arranging data in groups or classes onto the basis of common characteristics. So, whenever we are talking about the classification of the data, here editing of the data has been done, you have edited the data, which data is useful for our research, which is not being useful for the research. After that, we have coded the data that we have given the different numeral values to the data and the third step is classification, that larger volume of data is going to be classified according to its attributes, according to the class interval whatever attributes, what are the similar attributes which are being there, we are going to classify the data into that basis. For example, age group, 
for example the gender so classifying the data on the basis of these attributes there are two types of classification classification according to attributes and classification according to the class intervals if we are taking certain attributes for our study if our study is qualitative study we are going to classify the data into different attributes which is being important for our research but if it is our quantified data quantified study we are going to classify our data into class interval now tabulation when a mass of data has been assembled it becomes necessary for the researcher to arrange the same in some kind of concise and logical order this procedure is referred to as tabulation thus tabulation is the process of summarizing raw data and displaying the same into compact form okay so we have got a large number of data and we have to compact that data into simpler forms into a simpler way so here tabulation is very important why because tables are the best way by which we can represent our data to the audience which are the best way to represent our data towards the people who are being directly or indirectly related with our study research study so for this tabulation is being done for further analysis in the broader sense tabulation is an orderly arrangement of data in columns and row so here the mass of the data is being collected and it is being presented in our research work in the form of tables and row so table is a simpler medium by which we can present our data to our respected audience now tabulation is essential because of the following reason why tabulation is being essential it is a big question the first one is it conserves space and reduces explanatory and descriptive statement to a minimum so whenever we are conducting a study a research work on any of the area we have to compress our data and the best medium to compress our data is using a tabular form here the table is a small and a medium way by which we can present our data it facilitates the process of comparison by the help of table it is easier for a researcher to compare the values if you are conducting a study in automobile industry and you are taking two companies for example tata and mahindra it is easier for a researcher to compare both the progress the advantages the profits everything you can compare easily by the help of table it facilitates the summation of the items and the detection of the errors and omissions by the help of table we can easily detect the problems we can detect that what are the omissions what are the errors which are there in our data why because any value which is not being filled over there can easily been corrected by the help of table it provides a basis for various statistical competition as you all know that for an analysis portion a researcher has to use different statistical tools and these statistical tools are the core for any of the analysis portion and to interpret it so this is statistical tools whether it is parametric or non parametric it should have a proper value system and tabulation used to be helping in this process that by the help of table you can easily use a statistical tool for your interpretation process now diagrams so graphs and diagrams are very important for ethical and easy presentation of our research work a diagram is a symbolic representation of information using visualization techniques right visualization technique now what is visualization technique means sometimes it is very difficult for any of us to read what is been written in the walls in the holdings in the posters but when it is being presented to diagram form it is being easily understood by all the people so in research work also we used to take the help of diagrams as this diagrammatic representation used to help the audience to understand the research in more simpler and easier form now advantages of diagram why we used to have the diagrams in our research work why 
the first one is quick way for audience to visualize what you are saying means whatever the researcher is going to say by the help of diagram it is easily for a audience to understand that what a researcher wants to say forceful means by the help of diagrams a simple concept is being understood by the audience in a very forceful manner then convincing by the help of a diagram it is a very convenient matter why which we are going to help our audience to understand about the research work compact way to convey information it is a very compact way if you have got a data of 5 pages it is very difficult to interpret that data and to give that data to the audience and if they want to understand they have to read the all the 5 pages so by the help of these diagrams it is a compact way you can say that this is the way by which we can understand the data more interesting than just talk or print it is a very interesting way of presenting our data to the audience why because it is a simpler form in which we can present our data to the audience now what are the disadvantages apart from various advantages numerous advantages there are certain disadvantages of diagrams the first one is time consuming to make because whatever diagram you are going to make it takes time it takes lot of skills what you are presenting whether it is a monotype or whether it is a polymonotype so all these things must be considered what are the color you are going to take what is the material layout everything must be considered so it takes time so for any of the diagrammatic representation it is a time consuming activity then technical in nature means audience knowledge to interpret it and understand whatever you are presenting in the form of diagram whether it is being easily understood by the audience or not if your audience is not of technical nature as same as you are this might be it gives a wrong statement a wrong message to the audience and the last one is costly as depending on the medium used if you are using a diagrammatic method you are going to use a color printer you are going to use the poster board transfer different mediums which required a lot of money and it makes your research work a costly medium then we go to pictograms pictograms also called pictogram or pictograph is a ideogram that conveys its meaning through its pictorial resemblance to a physical object so certain times you have seen many times you have seen that there are different pictograms which is being given over there and by the help of pictograms a researcher used to convey his message that what is what he is going to to what he is going to tell to his audience now these are the pictograms we have seen that these commonly pictograms are being assigned at the road side so these pictograms says that what is your speed limit what is the length limit what is the load limit so all these things are there so by the help of pictogram a driver used to understand that how he is going to drive in the road same way this is a pictogram here it is a danger it is a fire so all these pictograms are very useful for a research work whatever pictograms you are using for a research it should be have a meaningful importance and relevance for your research work now graphs a graph can be defined as a pictorial representation or a diagram that represent data or values in the organized manner so here graph as you all know is being drawn on the graph paper it has got two axes x and y axis we have to take the value of independent and dependent and on the basis of that you are going to represent your data so here it is a very useful medium by which we are going to present our data to the audience the points on the graph often represent the relationship between the two or more things means if you are going to have x series y series or z series you are going to have a relationship you are going to show the relationship whether it is positively related it whether it is negatively related what is the relationship between the two values x and y x y z 
So all these can be easily interpreted by the help of graphs. So the first graph we are going to take over here is a scatter diagram. It is one of the easiest and simplest method of presenting your data to the audience. Here you have got X series and Y series. You have got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and you have got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So these are the values over here. So whenever you are going to take a scatter diagram, simply you have got certain X series data and Y series data. You put the certain points over there and after putting that point, you have to draw a scale like this or jointing different points like this or you can go to a negative scale. So by jointing this point, by joining this point, you are going to get an axis whether it is x axis or y axis and according to that you are going to interpret your result. Now bar graph. It is also a most important and useful manner in which you can present your data. Bar graph is commonly used. You have got X and Y series over here and according to your class interval, you select different values. If you have got 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, this class interval you have got and the values you have got. So according to that, you are going to present your data. Bar graph is one of the most important tool because here the authority relationship is being shown that which one is the most important. By the help of a bar graph, you can easily resemble that for example here, the blue one. It is the tallest one and this is the most important in all the activity. Means the growth is going to start from yellow one and going to be in the blue one. Now histogram. Histogram is very important. As you all know that here also X and Y series is being given. In the bar graph we have seen that the class interval has got different changes but here the class interval hasn't have changed 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And you have to see that how many of the values are from 0.5 to 1, 1 to 2. So like this we are going to create a histogram. It is one of the most important method when we are going to have a pictorial representation of our data or probabilistic model. Whenever we are going to, going to use the probability, it is one of the most important chart which is being used over there. Then pie chart. You have got a universe and you have got different values. Whenever you are going to show that what is the quantity of that specific item in the whole universe, you are going to take the help of pie chart. Why? Because pie chart is the best representation of a data from the whole universe as a whole. Here, whatever value we have got, we have to convert that value into percentage and multiply that value into 360 because pie chart is a 360 value. So we have to going to multiply that value into 360 and whatever value we are going to get, we say that that portion of the thing is being occupied by the whole universe of our study. Now take example over here, favorite subject is being given. So there are certain students who is being considered for the study and we say that we have taken mathematics, science, English, French, these four subjects. So here 144 degree is being given means 144 degree of the area is being covered universe that these students like math. This is the best. Then you have got French 108. You have got English 72 percent, 72 degree and science 36 degree. So this degree is being considered and this degree is being taken out by the value and that value is divided by 100 and multiplied by 360 you are going to get the value. Difference between graphs and diagram. What is the difference between graph and diagram? When we are going to take graph and when we are going to take the diagram. The first one is all graphs are diagrams but not all diagrams are graphs. This means that diagram is only a subset of graph. Here you can say that whatever, whatever graphs are being there, 
it is all been represented it is all been taken as a diagrams but all diagrams are not raw why because it cannot be shown into x and y series second graph is a representation of information using lines or two or three axes such as x y and z whereas diagram is a simple pictorial representation of what a thing looks like or how it works means for a graph you required x series y series z series but for diagram it doesn't require x y z series it is just a pictorial form of representing certain things graphs are representation to a scale whereas diagrams need not to be scale so for all the graphs you require a simple scale 0 5 10 15 1 2 3 4 5 6 100 200 500 to so these are the scales for graphs you required a scale but for diagram you did not you did not required any scale then diagrams are more attractive to look at which is why that are used in publicity why graphs are not used for statistician as researchers so diagrams are very useful it is being used commonly used to show the research work but graph is not commonly used it is only used in our research work in our thesis work values of mean and median can be calculated through graphs which is not possible with the diagrams whenever we have to calculate the mean median value we are going to take the help of graphs but diagram is not going to help us in calculation of any of the statistical tools graphs are drawn in graph paper whereas diagram do not need a graph paper so for graphs you require the graph paper because you have what x series y series and different values but for diagram you don't require any graph paper and the last one is for frequency distribution only graphs are used and it cannot be represented through diagrams so for all the frequency distribution what is the frequency how the frequency is going to be it is been rising or is it going to be decreasing it should always be calculated by the help of graph and it should not be considered by the help of diagram so diagrams and graphs both are useful for our research work but there is a difference between both so for all the statistical calculation graphs is used while whenever we have to present our research into a simpler form into a simpler form into a form which is being easily understood by the audience we used to take the help of diagram so i hope you have understood the difference between graph and diagram you have understood what are the various types of graphs and you also have understood that how and why these graphs and diagrams are useful for the research work